we've learned t-test. T-test can only work for one sample or two samples, one population or two populations. Now, in a case when you have three populations, you can't use t-test. So what do you use? ANOVA. So you see the same definition with t-test. It's used for comparison. That's what it's used for, for comparison. To test if there's a significant difference among three groups. For example, if we have two vaccines already in existence, or let me say we have two companies producing bulbs. Company A owned by Santos is producing bulb A. Company B owned by Emmanuel is producing bulb B. Then I want to start producing a new bulb. A new, I want to create my own company, company C. So I need my company to be performing better than company A and company B. So I will now, after doing everything, I have to carry out my ANOVA test to check if there's any significant difference between the three products. So that's what we mean by ANOVA, trying to compare. It must not be three, it can be more than three, but just know it's more than two. Whenever you are doing ANOVA and you have only two groups, it will, the answer will be the same as T-test. But when you, when you have more than, remember T-test can still do for two groups. So the answer will be similar. The conclusion will be similar. So we use ANOVA for two, you can, you can still use it for two groups. That's what I'm trying to tell you. So two or more groups. But when you use it for two groups, the answer is similar to T-test. So it's used to test for significant difference between two or more groups. ANOVA is used to test for significant difference. I say if you use, when we have only two variables, two population or two samples, that is similar to the t-test. So when you have two variables, it's better you work with your t-test. Then it's better to use ANOVA when you have three or more, because you can't use t-test in choice situation. So you already have, there's happened that two companies producing electric bulbs and you want to establish yours. So you have to test if there's any significant difference between yours and the two existing companies. So that's when we use ANOVA. So we are going to start with one way ANOVA. In one way ANOVA, we have one factor, one factor, one factor, one factor. I'm not teaching ANOVA, I'm not giving you a theoretical teachings on ANOVA, yeah. My species have to run it using Minitab and SPSS. So you can go online and learn more about ANOVA, but I will try my best to explain it. For example, if I'm talking about Bob's now, the first company, com the first company, the second company, the third company, my factor here is what electric bulb. I have only one factor. But this factor I have that I call electric bulb has three levels. What are the levels? The first existing company, the second existing company, and the new one I want to establish. So that these are the three factors. These are the three factors. So let me simulate the data. If I want to simulate the data, you go to calculate random data, then you select where you want to simulate data. So I want, if you want a positive number, then you have to choose a distribution that will give you a positive number. So let me use a uniform distribution. Uniform distribution. The number of rows of data to generate. So I want 20. Okay, let me select 15. Where will they store the data? Store it in C1. Okay, let me cancel this first and delete this. Calculate random data, uniform distribution. I want the computer to assist me to. Are you seeing now? So you can also learn this, even though it's not part of what you're learning. You can generate. I want it to be stored in C1, capital C1. What will be the lowest number? The lowest number should be 20, and the highest number should be 100. So this, it will select 15 numbers randomly. Okay, are we seeing the result? It's still loading. Are we seeing the result? Correct. So this is the first company, so I'll call it first. So I want to simulate data again for the second company, second company, and the third company. Now, if you simulate data, if I simulate data using the same numbers I selected here, yeah, I won't get the same answer because why is it random? It's a random selection. 
you won't if you do the same thing you won't get the same result because it's just like you are picking a a ball from a box it's not possible that you pick the same ball the same ball at the same time uh, when you try again so now i want to change okay let me still use uniform distribution but let me change my to 50 50 to 100 then it's all distribution third there is let me change on distribution let me use binomial i want 15 save it in thoughts no easy yeah you see the highest number you can get you can get up to 150 the probability let me use 0.5 okay so i have three companies so this is the company i'm producing uh, this is my own company these first the first and second are the existing companies so i want to test for significant difference if my company is better than if it, or is similar to the existing companies so we'll call it one way and over why one way we have two ways why is this called one way it has one factor what is the factor bobs bobs but this bob uh the factor bob has three levels the three levels are what first second and third now what we call this is replication they don't call these factors well it was replicated just like for the first copy i collected the first bob second bob third bob fourth bob fifth bob so i replicated the replicated it how many times 15 times so we call this replication so the rules are called replication the columns are called factors now why i have not i've been trying i've not been using rule column is because sometimes i can in your textbook you can they can uh you may not see the factors in the column sometimes they write the factors in the rules so you can't just say the factors must always be at the column so you can't just, just say that when your textbook if you check some textbook they put the factors they can turn this table the other way and the factors will end up being but just know that in one way and over one fact one factor and what application can be replicated any number of times but the factor must be one so if you want to test this in you want to do the analysis in minitab it has two ways of doing it like uh, the t-test i've taught t-test either you leave the data the way it is or you arrange all of them in one column then your second column will be where you dictate the group you can use zero for the first data one for the second data and two for the third data but minita gave us the option for we to do both methods you can leave it the way it is or you move it all of them to one group but in spss spss you can't do it this way. SPSS only has one method. How do you do it in SPSS? In SPSS, look how in SPSS you move this. You have to call the put all of them in one group. Take note of the number. This we are the first one. Sort that. I will use zero to represent it. I will paste this. This we are the second number. Sort that. I will use one to represent it. I'll copy the last one. Then I will, the, all this will be two. Two, 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 two. I can, this, all this will be one. Why all this will be zero? I can come to variable view and change the name first, second, and third. I can change the decimal here to zero and leave the rest. Okay, no, 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 no. Sorry. I forgot that I've converted it this way. So it's not first, second, and third. This is the group or the companies companies then i'll come to value zero means the first remember we converted it to the long form i will call it the long format the first method was the white format 
So you have to arrange your data in the long format for you to do it, for you to use it in a SVSS editor. So I have to click, I'll click OK and change it to zero. I will delete this. Then this will be called the lifespan. So the values are the lifespan of lifespan of the different box. So that's how it is. So this is how you arrange your data in SPSS. Now in Minitab, you can arrange your data the way it is now, the way it is here, or you arrange your data this way. Your choice. So that's why Minitab will give us the option. Look at where you select. So data are in one column. That the way it is now in SPSS, or you change it data in separate column. So data in separate column. So I'm showing you how to do it. You click, select, you go to option. Then you have to test for all the assumptions. You have to test for all the assumptions. So let's continue. I will come back to this comparison procedure. We'll come back to it. Graph. Box, let's click box plot. Normality, normality test. Residual versus speed is for what? Constant variance or almost elasticity. So I've tested for two. I've clicked box plot also. You can click OK. 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 I can click OK now. So this for normality, this for box plot. Okay, so let me do it in SPSS. Then we we'll then learn how to interpret it. You go to compare me one way and over. You move the companies to here yeah, as factor, then you, the numbers, the one that contain numbers to dependent list. You go to Nothing here. This will stock is what I said I will explain later. And uh, so I will come back to that. So you click descriptive, you click homogeneity or variance test. Homogeneity or variance, same thing as constant variance, same thing as almost uh, elasticity. So you click it. Okay. Okay. So this is the descriptive statistics of the variables. So look at the first, second, third. This is homogeneity of variance. So if I'm doing ANOVA, I don't like, I don't understand this uh, plot that is coming from Minita. So I don't always use it. I'm removing, I don't always use it. I, go, I use SPSS results. SPSS results for the test for test of homogeneity of variance. Both of them are doing the same thing, but I prefer using, I've, I'm, I've always said this, I prefer using people. So this is what we're going to use in the vein test to test for constant variance, homogeneity of variance. Then minute have give us normality. SPS has been give us normality. So we're going to take the normality test from this. If you are not sure if this is normally distributed, what will you do? If you are not sure if this is normally distributed, what will you do? If you are not sure if it's normally, what will you do? You come to this, you repeat the analysis. You repeat the analysis and you save the, you go to storage, save the residual, save the residual, if you are not sure. Then after saving the residual, you do the analysis yourself, you go to, oh, no, 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 no. You can't do this in ANOVA. So you have to only make judgment based on the graph. Do this. So you have to make judgment only on the graph. So start and over. Thank you. So I have to make judgment only on the graph. So we'll this for normality. So because most of the points are on the diagonal line, I will claim is I will assume it's normal distributed. Most of the point are on the diagonal line. I will assume it's normal distributed. Okay, we can test for box plot. It's one test for outlier. Most times I have I don't really test for that outlier most times. Is that not really the best one? So let's test for it. 
Oh, that's good. That's just box load. Box load this. Okay. The first one. No outlier. Box load. Second one. No outlier. Box load. The third one. No outlier. But even in a, okay, no outlier. So let's start there. So you can copy the three and move the result, your analysis, and say there is no outlier. Remember, it's not only box plot you can use to test for this. You can also use a graph test that is there. So it's your choice. Are you seeing outlier test? So let's see if it give us the same result. No outlier. No outlier. No outlier. So I've used two tests to test for. So, so far we've done how many tests for assumptions. I'm not going to explain that. That's why I took my time to explain it. I've tested for outlier. I've tested for normality. And I've also tested for homogeneity of variance. Homogeneity of variance, I use what? The living test. Living test. See what I'm seeing it is like this living test is not satisfied. Let me check. Any questions so far? Any questions so far? Hope you are still with me. No question. Okay, okay. Let me see. It's like I've not been doing an over for people. Don't have an over here. Mm. Let me see. Let me check this another. Okay. So now that we have tested the assumptions, as let's assume all the assumptions are satisfied. What what and what to do in that week? Mini tab. Okay, let me clear all this. Let me clear all this. So you do the analysis again after testing for the assumptions. So you get your result. So this is the result of my ANOVA test. So ANOVA will, it will give you, many times will give you the hypothesis. You know, the hypothesis is this, 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 this. Then look at the ANOVA table. Now you reject the hypothesis if your p value. This is not hypothesis. They're not hypothesis that all the three companies are similar. The lifespan of the three companies are equal. The alternative hypothesis is that at least one of them is not the same. At least one of them is different. So we reject the hypothesis when your p-value is less than 0 0.05. So in this case, we are not going to reject. It means you that is, your third company is performing similar to the existing company. So there is no... Your, if you are saying that your company is better than the previous one, you're lying, you're committing a crime. So you can't say that your company is better. So that's what the result is telling us. Your company is similar to the existing one. It's not better. And also there is no proof that we can say that your company is performing worse also. So that means your company is performing similar So that's the meaning of the p-value. I was trying to open this Word document. So sometimes I give people, when they ask me to do analysis, I give them a short note on the method they are using. So it's, in this work, I try to explain what ANOVA is. I think when, let me check when I did this work for them. I did this work in 2020. So that's two years ago. So, I did a just little interpretation like description of ANOVA. 
before I thread the analysis. So this is the, this, the, we have the descriptive statistics. Then I use Minitab. This is not hypothesis. And Minitab only gave me this. I mean, I added another way of saying it, which is this. So that the, I related it to the work the person gave to me. I related it to the work the person gave to me. So in this case, even though ANOVA told me all means are equal, in this particular example we are doing, relating it to the example, it means what the lifespan of the three companies are similar or are equal. So that I related it to our work. At least one minute different, I also related it to the client work. I use 0 0.1 as the level of significance. Look at my ANOVA table, my decision rule, and my conclusion. Okay, in this work, I didn't test for assumption, which is bad. I think it was because of the clients. So the client didn't want assumption, so that's why I didn't test for it. If I think that we are okay with one way and over. So now let's try something else. I want to try something else now. I want to try, I want to explain that post hoc that I skipped. So I will give you an assignment on one way and over. Everybody will do it. I've explained everything simple. If you have understood what I've been teaching so far, because almost everything is similar. If you have followed me up to this point, I think you can do even the ones I may not teach you. I will also teach you how to get the analysis yourself at the end of the class. I will teach you how to get any other analysis that Sometimes there are some analysis I may hear that may be the first time I'll be hearing it. I, I, then I will teach you how to get it, how to do something like that. If you have been following all of it so far, there's nothing you cannot do. So let me simulate another data, the fourth company. So I want it to be totally different from this that I will reject. So I will simulate from uniform. The fourth, the slow, smallest number should be 150, and the biggest number should be 1000. I want it to be totally different from this one, so that I will reject. So let's repeat the same analysis and over one way. I don't want this again. Graph. I don't want, okay, I can leave it up. It up okay. So it's, we can say it's normally distributed. We use a, a SPSS to do the uh, homogeneity of variance test. We don't use a graphical method. So we we'll copy the same data. For the homogeneity of variance, we we'll copy this. We we'll copy, go to SPSS. You can use SPSS to do the main analysis if you want. So that will be three. Three. So I'll copy it and paste it. Then I'll come to variable view and define what three means. So three is the fourth company. So I will repeat the analysis here and it will give me to give me my living test. That's what I will use for my homogeneity of variance test. So this is my living test. So this is what I will use in place of that graph. Now let's assume the, now I don't really know what SPSS is using as the null hypothesis in this test of homogeneity of variance. I've forgotten it. So let me, let me show you also, let show you how to get all these things now. So in, in situation where you don't know what SPSS, so you need to know what SPSS is using as the null hypothesis in this test. This is SPSS saying that null hypothesis is that there is homogeneity of variance and the alternative is that there is no homogeneity of variance. So you have to know what SPSS is as Now come back to this. So let's assume all the assumptions are satisfied. Let's learn how to interpret it. So I'll go back to Minitab. You can also use this to interpret it. Look at the result here. Look at the ANOVA table and the descriptive statistics. 
So me, I prefer taking the ANOVA table from SPSS. Why? Because SPSS will bring it as a table. Minitab will not bring it as a table. Are you seeing it? Minitab didn't bring it as a table. So if, if you want to do it with Minitab, you have to be the one to arrange it as a table. You have to be the one to arrange it as a table. You don't just copy this, copy this and take it to Word. Your client will complain. So you don't say, are you saying this? You take it to Word, now it's not coming as a uh, table. Your client will complain. So I prefer taking Minitab or I look for a way to convert it from Minitab to table, uh, to table. So I prefer taking this. Go back to my menu tab. So this is not like put S6, alternative I put S6, you can put it related to the work. The work here is about lifespan of electric bulbs related to the work. Now in this case, oh, we are still not rejecting. Why, 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 why? why? No, no, I didn't do the analysis here. One way and over. Uh, I didn't add it. It's supposed to be one to four. Okay. How did I? Okay. Let, let's continue. I didn't do it completely. I didn't add four. Correct. So we are rejecting. I think we are rejecting. P value now we are rejecting. So in a case like this, after you confirm that the data satisfy all the assumptions of one way and over, the data satisfy all the assumptions of one way and over. Um, we tested for normality. We tested for with normality. We didn't test for autocorrelation here. Take note, we didn't test for autocorrelation. So what are the assumptions we test for one way and over? We test for normality. We test for homogeneity of variance. We can also test for outlier. So I've mentioned three assumptions we test. Homogeneity of variance, we are using the event test. Normality, we are using the normal probability plot. Then we can test for outlier. And I mentioned three assumptions that we can test. Even the data is showing that it doesn't follow a normal distribution. This is showing that it doesn't follow a normal distribution. So that means you cannot, since it has failed the assumption, you cannot continue with the analysis. But because for learning's sake, let's just assume that it follows, it follows the assumption. This thing has failed the assumption. It has failed the assumption. So you can't do the analysis again. So what are you supposed to do in such situation? In the writing you're supposed to do, you're supposed to use Kruskawalis test. That's the writing you're supposed to do. Look at Kruskawalis. You come to non-parametric. You come to, you know, independent sample. Let me see this. Okay. So something like this company will come here. So something like this. I'm not teaching that yet. So something is still loading. So what I'm saying, whenever your data has failed, you have to look for another method to use. So for that, I've been saying, assumption assumption to tell you how important it is in statistics but now let's let me see if i got it properly i seen the name cruz cavalis i seen it cruz cavalis that i got it so this is what you use in a case when one way and over so the equivalent the non-parametric equivalent of the and one way and over is called cruz cavalis now it doesn't have all those assumptions that one way and over has. Back to our one way and over. I always think that it has filled the normality plot, so we can't use it. And I think it has also filled the homogeneity of variance test. The homo homogeneity, I think this homogeneity, the null hypothesis is that there's homo uh, homogeneity of variance, there's constant variance. Why the alternative is that there is no homogeneity of variance. And yeah, we're also rejecting the null hypothesis. So rejecting means it has also failed the homogeneity of variance assumptions. Now, whenever you want to, okay, let me finish this, then I will come back to my test. We are talking about how, what to do in a case. So now let's assume that all the assumptions are satisfied. 
And so because all the assumptions are satisfied, you can now continue with your one way and over. Now, this is how you do it. They give you a work to do. So first you tell them, we are going to use the one way and over. Like I told you, always state the method you use. The reason why you're using it is because we are testing for significant difference for three groups, or we are testing for significant for four groups. So I've stated why I'm using ANOVA. Then before we can continue with the one way ANOVA test, I'm teaching how you can interpret it. We have to test for all the assumptions of the one way ANOVA to know if the data satisfy all the assumptions. The assumption that will be tested are the normality, homogeneity of variance, outlier, two stop, and outlier. Then you can now say the tests are given below one normality. You test if it satisfies normality test. Two outlier. Three homogeneity of variance. Then if it has satisfied all the assumptions, you cannot continue. So since it has been shown that the data satisfies all the assumption of the one way ANOVA. We cannot proceed, we cannot continue with the one way ANOVA analysis. So the result of the one way ANOVA analysis are given below. That's when you can now start your one way ANOVA proper. So I've taught you how to explain how to interpret it. Then you continue. The null hypothesis for the one way ANOVA is that there is no significant difference among the four groups, among the three groups. And this is tested against the alternative hypothesis that there is a significant difference among the three groups. The level of significance that will be used for this test is 0 0.05. The ANOVA table for this test is given below or is given in table. Me, I like using, I, I like uh, labeling my table. So I can say it's given in table 3.0 or three, table three. Then I put my ANOVA, then I will copy my ANOVA, my ANOVA table my ANOVA table and paste. Then I will state my the null hypothesis, my decision rule. Now my null hypothesis will be rejected if the p-value is less than 0 0.05. And based on and based on the result from the ANOVA table, the p-value can be seen to be equal to 0 0.00. And this is less than the level of significance. That means I'm going to reject the null hypothesis. And I'm going to conclude that there is a significant difference among the four companies producing electric bulbs. So now the next thing I want to teach, when there is a significant difference, what will you do? If there is a significant difference, what will you do? Now, ANOVA just told us that, ANOVA just told us that there is a significant difference. It just told us that the four companies are not similar, mm -hmm. but it didn't tell us the one that is different from each other. It told us that, the four, the four companies here, they are not similar. Okay, they are not similar. It's possible that two may be similar and one is different. So can you explain in detail the one that is totally different? Or is it that the four of them are totally different from each other? Or is it that two are similar? Why the other two are different from them? Can't you explain further? ANOVA cannot answer that. ANOVA will just tell you, there is a significant difference. Go and look for the one that is different from them. So in such situation, what do we do? We then, we then do what they call post-hoc test, P-O-S-T-H-O-C. Another name for it is multiple comparison test. I call it post-hoc test or multiple comparison test. Now we have different post-hoc tests and we have different com multiple comparison tests. So that's why I said I will come back to this. So the, you see the one way and over comparison. So we have different multiple comparison tests. We have the Turkey mini tab only gave us option for four. Let me show you the different options for SPSS. I see post hoc. I see SPSS give up to 15. This is six, six, 12, 13, 14. SPSS give us up to 14. But let me, I mean, I, I've never used all this. The only one I use is either LSE or Turkey. That's the one I use. They, Donka, they taught me Donka in school. Donka multiple range test, that's the full name. But the two I mostly use is Turkey or LSD. This Turkey is equivalent to Fisher. So LSD there is equivalent, equivalent to Fisher. It's the same thing as this Fisher. So what I normally use is either one of like the Tokyo or the feature. 
So you choose the one you want to use. So let me use copy. You click. So after I've been explaining how you interpret your results. So after telling them that you are rejecting, you know, like put S's, you then put full stop. You continue. ANOVA has told us that there is a significant difference. But ANOVA didn't tell us the particular company or the particular variable that is different or that are different. So we are going to use the multiple comparison test, that is the talking multiple comparison test to compare two, like to compare two companies uh, or to compare all the companies. So we're going to use multiple comparison tests to compare all the companies to know the exact company that is significantly different from the others. For the multiple comparison tests, only two companies will be compared at a particular time. And this will be done till all the companies have been compared against each other. What I'm saying is that when you want to do a test, you only pick, so I can pick the first and the second test and compare. When I'm done with the first and second, I go to first and third, and I go to first and fourth. So only two companies will be compared at a single point in time. And this will be repeated till all the companies have been compared among themselves. So that's what the multiple comparison test does. So this is the result. Now look at the result. It tells us that means with the same letter means they are the same. So these three have the same letter. So it means third, first, and second company. They, they don't have any difference. So this one has a different letter, fourth. It has a different letter. So because it has a different letter, it means what? This is the one that is different from them. So you have you, all these things, you state it in your report. So the multiple comparison test shows that the first, second, and third companies have no significant difference among themselves. And this is shown this is shown using the Turkey test as they all have the same letter B. While the fourth company is significantly different from the other companies. And this is shown using the Turkey test with the letter A and B. Very simple. So in this, my result, now I've been able to tell, to make my own recommendation my, with facts that the three existing company behave similarly. Why the new company that was produced, that's the fourth one, is totally different from them. That means the fourth company is far better than the three existing companies. So remember, statistics is for decision making. So after stating this, you make your decision, you make your recommendation so that policymakers can make use of that. So what's my decision? What's my recommendation? That the fourth company should, they should approve the fourth company, that they should give them license, that the result shows that their uh, bulb is, the electric bulb produced that is better than the existing ones, da, da, da. So you are making recommendations. So that's the uh, uh, purpose of statistics. So I think I've successfully explained what one-way ANOVA is, how to do one-way ANOVA using Minitab and SPSS. You can also do your post hoc test using SPSS. So I can click LSD now. I use talking uh, Minitab, you click LSD. Now, Mini SPSS doesn't give it later. This is how to know if they are significantly different. You check their uh, P value. So this one, what this thing means is comparing first and second. Why is comparing first and third? And it's comparing first and fourth. So first and second, comparing only these two, the P value is what? 0 0.973 means it's greater than 0 0.05. Meaning first and second, no difference. First and third, no difference. But there's a difference between first and fourth. You've got the P value is this. You come to this second and first, you've already compared first and second, second and first, they mean the same thing. So no need of interpreting it again. Second and third, no difference. But there's a difference between second and what? Fourth. Third and first, no difference. You have already compared first and third, which is the same thing as third and first. Third and second, no difference. But there's a difference between third and fourth. So that's how. So me, when I want to do put off test, I don't use SPSS. I use what Minita. Why do I prepare Minita? Minita give me the letter with A, B, and it's easy to interpret this. So I use Minita to explain put off test. Now, don't follow me. It's your choice. You decide whether you want to use Minita or SPSS.
So I believe I've successfully explained what one way ANOVA is. So now we'll go over to two way ANOVA. We'll go back to two way ANOVA. A minute, please. Okay, so I'm, I'm successfully explained one way and over. So we'll go back to two way and over. Then maybe we'll stop there. Uh, two way and over, difference between two way and over and one way and over is that two way and over has two factors. Two way and over has two factors. Why one way and over has one factor. Now in two-way ANOVA, we have different types. We have two-way ANOVA without replication. We have two-way ANOVA with replication. We have two-way ANOVA without replication. We have two-way ANOVA with replication. Now, I don't. I will just explain it and you will still follow. I will show you how to do it. Then the interpretation is very simple. Like I told you, if you followed me up to this point, then you can interpret anything. So I will just show you how to do it. The main thing is for you to know when to use it. When, if you see a work, like sometimes I see people using, uh, even during uh, where, where I work, Panaye project, you will see some of them using one way ANOVA when they are supposed to use two way ANOVA. Or you see them using two way ANOVA when they are supposed to use one way ANOVA. So it's like I told you, a data doctor, you prescribe the right and appropriate statistical method to use. So you pre prescribe the right and the appropriate statistical method to use as a data doctor. So now we are going to treat two types oh, and two way ANOVA without replication and two way ANOVA with replication. Now let me teach you how to differentiate both. Now, okay, one of the reasons why one of the reasons why we use two way ANOVA is for blocking. What do I mean blocking? We use it to reduce. Uh, the variation within cells. Now, let me explain. Assuming I'm comparing results from three departments, let's say I have statistics, mathematics, I'm comparing GP and geology. Now, if you compare a student from year one from statistics, the GP, with a student from in final year in mathematics, and a student in third year in geology, if you compare the, the three results, you discover that there, of the two, there will be a significant difference. Why? Because statistics just one sec, uh, one uh, section he has spent in school. The mathematics has spent five sections, while geology has spent three sections. If they don't have the same uh, basis of comparing. And if you use only one way ANOVA, one way ANOVA will not provide uh, will not provide any uh, allowance allowance for that. It will just compare the three of them. But in two-way ANOVA, two-way ANOVA will compare that we make allowance for that. So two-way ANOVA will group all, all the first class in statistics. So two-way ANOVA can do something like this. This is level year one. To group all the year one, year one. So to compare year one from statistics, year one from mathematics and year one from geology. It will compare, it will go to year two and compare year two from statistics, year two from mathematics, and year two from geology. If you go to year three, compare year three from mathematics, from statistics, year three from mathematics, and year three from geology. It will do so for year four, and also do so for year five. So in that case, if I'm comparing a student from statistics in year five, that I'm also, I'm comparing that student with another student, you see, in still, still in 500 level from in mathematics, and still in 500 level in geology. In this case now, I've, been, I've tried to group them to similar group to reduce the variation and also to improve uh, the accuracy of my results. So that's the difference between one way and over. So in, two, in this two way and over, we have two factors. What's the first factor? Department. Department has three levels. What's the second factor? The level. That is the year in school or level in school. And this 
year in school has five levels, year one to final year. Uh, that's the two factors. Now, if I only, please take note, just follow me. I'm taking it one after the other, step after the other. I've tried, what I've explained so far is two way and over without replication. Where I just picked only one student from statistics year one, one student from mathematics year two, one student from geology year one. The same thing, only one student I picked. So we'll call that two way and over without replication. Now, if I pick four students in year one statistics, another four students in year one mathematics, another four students in year one geology, I pick another four students in year two statistics, four students in year two mathematics, four students in year two geology, and I repeat for all of them. We call it two way and over with replication two-way and over with replication. That is very good. Now, take note, SPSS, I don't know if SPSS can do two-way and over without replication. I don't know that. I may be wrong. I don't know that. I've tried it a few times. I could not get it. I may be wrong. The only one I've seen on the SPSS, like I have been using SPSS to do is two-way and over with replication. When I have a data of two-way ANOVA without replication, I go to Minitab. So now let's start two-way ANOVA without replication using Minitab. I can delete this. I can delete this. I can delete this. Okay, so I can also delete this. So let's use this example. So how do you arrange your data? This is how you arrange your data. Um, remember, we are talking about, let me just arrange data, then I will show you how to arrange it so that, you know, you have to communicate in the language that uh, is year one, year two, year three, year four, and year five. So you have to communicate in the language that Minitab will understand. So I'm comparing CGPA. Okay, let me simulate data. Oh, let me uh, 5.0, 2.4, 2.5, 2.6, 2.7, 2.8, 2.9, 2.10, 2.11, 2.12, 2.13, 2.14, 2.15, 2.16, 2.17, 2.18, 2.19, 2.20, 2.21, 2
the next one is what department department then the third one will be a take note of how the data is this is a one to five Year one to five, and it's also year one to five for mathematics, and it's year one to five for geology. So you go to stats, you go to ANOVA, you go to general linear model. I think so. Generally, and you go to fit linear model. Let's see, it's been long I did this. Let's see. So response will be CDPA. Factor will be department and ye. You go to model, nothing is here. Option, nothing is here. Graph, normality. Okay. Okay. It's normally distributed. Wait, wait, please. I'll be talking about one way and over without replication and two and over with, sorry, two and over without replication. Uh, sorry for what happened in our last meeting. I discovered that the last part of my, of the video was not clear, was not, it was breaking. And I think it was because of the network. Sorry about that. So in our last class, I talked about one way ANOVA, which I think that one was clear enough for everyone to understand. I also talked about two way ANOVA without replication and two way ANOVA with replication. Then I talked about two way ANOVA with interaction and without interaction. I explained all these things and I believe that part is clear. So let me just show you how to do it again. So I'm sharing my screen. So I explained, I've taught you how to enter your data. So let me assume we are working with you where you enter all your data here. Yeah? Or let me, let me simulate data. Let me simulate data. So I go to calculate random data uniform. Let me simulate. 12 data and 12 try to c1 let's go from 0 to 5 okay so this can be the cgpa they will talk about departments i will talk about level so let's say we have three departments, math, stat, and physics. Math, stat, and physics. Math, stat, and physics. Math, stat, and physics. Then for level, we have 100 level, 200 level, and 300 level. No, the hundred level, hundred level, hundred level, two hundred level, two hundred level, and two hundred level, three hundred, three hundred, and three hundred, four hundred, four hundred, and four hundred. So we have year one to year four. So this is done with this is two way and over without replication because you can only we only have one student in mathematics that is in 100 level you can see mathematics 100 level again the next mathematics is in 200 level the next mathematics is in 300 level and the next mathematics is in 400 level so we only have one student in mathematics that is in 100 level one student in mathematics that is in 200 level so this is called two-way ANOVA without replication two-way ANOVA then if in a situation you have two students that are 
in mathematics and in hundred level that they will, it means it has been replicated more than once if you have two students in physics in hundred level that means it has been replicated more than once so from this it can be seen that we only have one student in mathematics and hundred level so this is two way and over without replication now you now ask yourself did you want to do with interaction or without interaction when we talk about two way and over with interaction it means you are considering you want to know the if there is significant difference in the performance of students in mathematics statistics and physics you also want to know if there is significant difference in the performance of students in 100 level 200 level 300 level and 400 level now that's all you are if you are concerned with only department and level that's two way and over without interaction but if you are concerned with both departments level and the combined combined the keyword there is combined effect of department and level then you know that they are talking about the interaction effect so you go to start and uh, ANOVA general linear model with general linear model then for the response you put your cgpa for level you put department and level then you go to let's see model is okay okay option everything is okay stepwise okay graph so graph will click normality okay results okay storage we don't want to spend anything so that's it so the only thing you are interested minitab will bring many things so it's normally distributed Minitab will bring many things but the only thing you want is your anova table so use your anova table to make your decision so in this case we are not rejecting we are not rejecting for department and we are also not rejecting for level so we did two-way anova two-way anova that's what we did but with with no interaction and also it was not replicated so you interpret using the anova table so there is no significant difference remember i told you when there is significant difference you have to do the post hoc test you have to do the post hoc test when there is significant difference so that's what I explained in our last class. So if I want to do uh, this same work, if I want to do the one that will have replication, I will go to start. Let me simulate more data. No, let me simulate more data. So I go to calculate random data from uniform distribution. Let me put it in C4 and later I will copy it. I will copy it cut and paste here paste i also copy this copy so in this case now we have two students in mathematics that is in 100 level so it has been replicated two times so i can repeat the analysis so Let me clean this. I when is when is two way and over with no replication. I prefer using Minitab. Then when there is replication, I use mostly use SPSS. Okay, it seems we are going to use SPSS. For this, the ANOVA table, but I don't want the ANOVA table to have this lack of feeds. And this, so I don't want to. So I'm going to use SPSS for this. So when I prefer using SPSF, when we're talking about replication, and when I'm talking about no replication, I use many tab. So let me go analyze general linear model univariate. You move your data data which is this then you move your two variables model continue i don't want intercept plot and click this add it is not compulsory that if you want it post octets we'll do post octets when you reject 
to for now I may ignore it. So if I later reject, I can normally plot this then homogeneity test. So okay. This for homogeneity test. Okay, maybe because of my data, so they didn't bring any value. So this is my ANOVA table and it brought with interaction, with interaction, brought with interaction. So this is the plot that asks uh, ANOVA to give to me. So you interpret this. So the first one is for department, the second one is for level, then the third one is the combined effect. So based on this, there is no significant difference between there's no significant difference in the performance of students in the various departments. There's no significant difference in the performance of students in the various levels. And there's no significant difference in the performance of, the, uh, of students in when you consider the combined effect of department and level. Sorry that I didn't change this via VAR0002. So I would have changed it to department level before doing the analysis. But we just to augment our last class that was not clear enough. So I think I've explained everything. So combine this with what we have in the last class to be able to, be able to know how to interpret this. So now I believe everyone can do my assignments. So I have to continue with what we have for today. So we'll go ahead to what we have for today. So today we'll be talking about the logistic regressions. The logistics regression. So we have three types that we'll talk about. We have the binomial logistic, we have the nominal logistic, and we have 